I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, because my parents, they met at the Topaz concentration camp where both their families were put during World War II. And I don't know if I should say this, but in the camps, you know, kind of leveled the field because they didn't come from the same ken or anything and the same social background. My father's parents came from Fukuoka Prefecture, a farming area, and his dad went to work for George Shima, who's the potato king in the San Joaquin Delta area. <laughs> so they lived in Isleton, but it was a really hard life being a sharecropper and growing asparagus and celery. And they had four boys and his mom died of cancer when she was only 37. And then they moved to Berkeley where then he went to high school. Um, but I know it was a very difficult life. On my mother's side, they came from Niigata Ken and, it, and they had more opportunity. My mother's dad actually was traveling. Oh, I want to go to the um, United States and find opportunity. You know, he was not a farmer. He started a dry cleaning business in San Francisco. They were active in the Buddhist church and activities, and he was the treasurer of the Buddhist church. Unfortunately, after World War II started, um, because he was the treasurer, Immediately, the FBI knocked on the door and he was taken away within minutes, actually, uh, not even able to pack. And um, the family went to try to find him at the immigration center. And he was already on a train to Bismarck, North Dakota, which was the high, you know, the penitentiary for high risk people. <laughs> and that was very, very traumatic for him and for the family to all of a sudden be without you know, the, the, um, their father. And then eventually they were all sent to Tanferan. And then after several months, the family was reunited again. The camps gave the, the Nisei generation the freedom to interact and, and work in different situations. My dad was in the drafting department and my mom was working as a secretary and that's how they met. Well, actually, um, they met, but then my dad went to Japan to serve for a year in the um, occupied Japan. Then he came back and then they got engaged and they got married. He had gone to Milwaukee, Wisconsin with that $25 ticket, you know, that you get to go one way. And he settled in Milwaukee and he found um, a job as a houseboy. And it happened to be for an industrial designer, which was perfect because eventually he got hired there. And so then later when he and my mom got married, they moved to Wisconsin. They just lived there for a couple of years where my older sister and I were born. So I have very little um, memory of Wisconsin. My mom wanted to come back to be with her folks and so they moved in with them for two years in Redwood City. With, and, um, and then meanwhile, my, job, my dad was looking for a job. And he finally found a job with Walter Landers and Associates. Then when he found that job, then we moved to Mill Valley um, in Marin County. I spent my whole childhood in Mill Valley or Marin County. The beginning of the 70s went to um, San Francisco State, and then that was the beginning of all the third world ethnic studies, anti-war movement. People were being inspired by the civil rights movement. Um, I was not involved in any of the San Francisco State strike, but I did know um, Lane Hirabayashi because actually the Hirabayashis lived in Mill Valley. Actually, Lane and I were both active in the Japanese community back then. But I do remember that Lane and I invited people from the Third World Liberation Front, including Jim Havarashi, to speak to our group in Tamil Pius High. And then Peter Yamamoto, he also went to Tam High. His father was very active in the um, longshoremen. He was also an artist, Peter's dad. And, you know, he invited us to see Dolores Huertas. You know, Marin is kind of a liberal bubble in a way so you know we were and so we're so close to san francisco we were 
influenced by the um, what was happening in San Francisco, which was a lot, a lot was going on there. And then a few years later, I went to LA and worked in the Little Tokyo People's Rights Organization. So I was very involved in what was the future of the Japanese community. And so I was more concerned with sociology, which I took in college and became involved in both San Francisco and, and Little Tokyo. To tell you the truth, I do art, but it's not, it was never the front seat. Actually, I didn't start doing art until about 20 years ago, after my children were basically grown up. When I'm talking about, you know, what inspired you into making art, I would say my father did because he was a self-made artist. You know, he always had, we had watercolors to work with. He drew things for his project sometimes at home. So I remember, you know, those really sharp pencils that he would have all ready on his desk. He didn't have very many things, but he did have, you know, his small collection of art books. It's not like he had just walls and walls of books. He was a minimalist, but, but um, it was always there. Also, we lived in nature and I always loved Japanese folk art. So there's a lot of inspirations. When um, I, I married Dwayne, San Jose was like the biggest thing for him. You know, was San Jose. <laughs> he was just San Jose, born and raised San Jose, you know. You know, so San Jose is, you know, where we got married. San Jose is funerals of our relatives at the Buddhist church. San Jose is, you know, we probably went to almost all the day remembrances, probably 30 to 40 day. It's like something you just did every year. The San Jose Obon is when you met your relatives that you only see once a year and some friends, you know. So anyway, you know, San Jose was very important as well as, you know, um, um, working initially with Knock and then, um, you know, Tom and Susan, um, Although politically, because I lived in Santa Cruz and I wanted to be active on a, on a weekly basis, it was, it was just more easier for me to join um, Santa Cruz Indivisible and attend all their activities and you know, do things. But San Jose yeah, is, has always been a very important part of, of our lives. That's also another reason why it's so important to do the Hidden Histories Project and San Jose is actually really, really fortunate because there's so few Japanese communities left, as well as there was a Filipino community and a Chinese community. It's all gone. And that's why Hidden Histories is really important. As you could see, the um, images that I submitted when I painted the koi are the, the suru or the mochi. So I have conceptual ideas, whatever media seems to work. So when I notice one person you know, did that dragon that was moving. Then I thought, oh, I'll put some of my ceramic images in there. And then Corinne kept saying, why don't you do something that's more like your collages where I have different things mixed up. And so that's why my final presentation to Hidden Histories was more like a little assemblage, which was a combination of the painted, the um, three-dimensional thing. You know, Corinne was very helpful in kind of inspiring me to just approach it like an art piece, which is using a variety of mediums, including photography, which could be another layer. Well, I just hope that, I'll, you know, I'll just be part of the nine people contributing, maybe, because art, I think, sometimes is easier to tell a story than 
just the written word. And so I just hope that my small contribution with through art will um, be interesting.